Hello everybody, this is Cool Scratch Tutorials, and today we are going to be going over part one of making yourself your very own Flappy Bird game. So let's just hop into the video. First off, what we want to do is import Flappy Bird into the game. So I'm just going to delete Scratch Cat here, and I'm going to go up to where I've searched Flappy Bird Transparent. Transparent is very, very important because if it doesn't have a checkered board pattern, then it's going to have a white background behind it like this which means it's just going to be a rectangle and not Flappy Bird itself. So what we're looking for here is an image not with checkerboards in the image itself, but with a white background. But when we click on it, there's going to be checkerboards behind it. So that's not happening. What about this one? Yes. So we have the solid color in the back, but when we click on it, it shows a checkerboard pattern, which is perfect. So let's right click on it. And let's save this image. I'm just going to save it as Flappy Bird. And just save it, and we can see it appears down here. Let's just go back to our code where we made our Scratch project itself. And let's go to Choose a Sprite and press Upload. Go to our Downloads area. Scroll down until we find our Flappy Bird. We can see it's saved right here. So I'm just going to click on it and press open. We can see it appears on our screen, but I want it a bit smaller, so maybe I'm gonna set it down to 30. You can The size setting is right here. I think it's still a little big, so I'm just gonna set the size to 20. That seems like a good size for now. Now, let's just go to our green flag clicked and make sure it is always set to size 20. So set size to 20%. So if we like make this like 40 or something, you can see it's this, but when we click our green flag, it'll go back to 20% size. Next, we want to figure out <clears throat> how we are going to make this game itself. So we know we're going to have Flappy Bird, and it's going to go up and down, dodging the pipes, but it never does move right or left. It stays in the same place, but it's the pipes that move. So to make this, I'm just going to go to our motion area, and drag in the go to block. Since it's only going to be our Y changing, which is our uh, vertical axis, all we want to do is set X to zero and Y to zero. Our X will always be zero. It's just our Y that will be changing. So when we click this, it will go to zero, zero, and he set size to 20. Next up, we are going to want to have some sort of gravity because gravity acts upon everything and it's just gonna fall until we make it fly. So we're gonna go to our variables and we're gonna make a variable and call this gravity. We wanna select for the sprite only cause gravity's only gonna be working on our flappy bird area and click okay. So we've created our gravity variable and we just wanna set it to zero cause it's always good to set our variables to zero when we first click the program. And next, which is a new thing we're going to do, is go to our My Block section. Go to My Blocks, click my, Make a Block, we're going to call this Gravity. Now it's very important that you click Run Without Screen Refresh. So call it Gravity, press Run Without Screen Refresh, and click OK. So define Gravity right here. To define it, Gravity, we want our character to fall. Just keep on falling until we can reset it. But to make it look more realistic, we don't want it to be moving the same speed the entire time. We want it, the more it's been falling, the faster it'll fall. It looks much more convincing. To do that, we want to go to our variable section and we want to click, drag in the change gravity by block. Make this, uh, make this a uh, negative one, which is what we want to happen. And then we want to go to our motion area and drag in the change block. Change X by, no, we actually want uh, change Y by. So change gravity by negative one and then change Y by. We want to change Y by gravity. So if we click gravity, we can see it will start at, oh, I haven't put it, I haven't actually used the block yet. So I'm just going to get a forever loop, put it under our green flag clicked and just drag in our gravity block that we see here. 
it's basically just implementing this code but it's just in a nice orderly block we can see that it gets bigger it goes from one which means we're actually falling faster the longer we are in air I feel like this is a little fast for our flappy bird to fall because we don't want to keep on always having to press space so I'm just gonna make this negative 0 0.5 it was just going to fall half as fast. See how he speeds up at the end? That is perfect. So we basically got in our gravity script down. Now I think we should make a flying script. Flappy bird, you either click or you press space to make our bird fly. For now, I'm just going to use space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in an if statement. I'm going to go to if blank then so we're gonna go to sensing and drag in the key space press block so this is always going to be running in a forever loop if our key space press we want him to fly upwards to do that what we want to do we don't want to set our gravity to zero see if we do this he will just uh, stick midair and he'll keep on falling still but what we want to do is actually set this to a higher number than the negative area. So if we set it to 10 and we click our green flag, we can see that Flappy Bird flies pretty high. We just want him to fly just a little bit. So we are going to want to set him to flying, set gravity to five. So we can, we can just click it once or we can hold him and he'll fly up more. Perfect. Now, if we look at our regular Flappy Bird game, we can see that Flappy Bird tilts up when he's flying and then looks forward when he isn't. So to do this, we're going to be going into the motion area. And we're going to want to drag in the point in direction block. Normally, we want him to point in the direction 90, which is straightforward. But if we want, if we press space, we want him to look up. So if we drag in one more of these point in direction blocks in the key spaced area, and we've set this to zero if we drag it because we want it to look up. We drag the arrow there. We can see that he looks straight up, which is kind of unrealistic. So just to solve this, we want to make it 45 degrees. It is just in between 90 and zero. We can see that he still looks up, and it gives, the, uh, gives a much more convincing way that he's flying. Great. Now that we've got our basic gravity and uh, jump and flying part down, what we want to do is actually get our pipe set up. Go down here and put, click paint a sprite. We want to con we don't want to convert it yet. We want to go to fill section. We want to make it a green color because the pipes in Flappy Bird are green, and I kind of like this green color right here. Now what we want to do is make sure we have a black outline selected and we're just going to want to select our rectangle tool and we can see that it makes sort of a pipe, a uh, pipe shape. In Flappy Bird, there's a little opening. Sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it's up at the top, sometimes it's at the bottom. So once we have this top pipe done, there's always a little uh, lip basically just a little area at the top that makes it look a little more like a pipe so I'm just gonna put that in like that and for this pipe I'm going to make it so it always is in the middle I would think we want around this much space I'm just gonna make a rectangle go to here I still think that's a little too a uh, little amount of space so I'm just gonna drag this down a bit and then add the lip of the pipe again there we go. So we got our very first pipe down, but we want one that's for the top and one that's for the bottom. So just to do this, we want to go to choose a costume and paint. We just want to do this again, except for this time, I'm going to make it so there's only an opening at the top. So I'm going to make my pipe go maybe to the middle here, drag it down just a bit. I'm going to add the lip here. And then right up here, I'm going to add the top area. A 
This part here is a little uneven and it's bugging me. I'm just going to fix that. There we go. So we can see that flappy bird has to go all the way up now instead of just staying in the middle. So we have the middle pipe and we have the tall pipe. I have to say we get started on the bottom pipe. So let's go down here and just make our bottom pipe. It's going to just be around here. I'm going to draw the lip, of course. Drag it in place. There we go. And then make this one come down a bit more because we want it at the bottom. And there we go. I feel like it's a little bit uneven, so I'm just going to drag everything like this over a bit. There you go. So we got our middle tube, we got our high tube, and we got our low tube. So we have our three tubes, and now we want to make it so our tubes start here, and then they make their way across the screen for Flappy Bird to dodge. To do that, what we want to do is actually use this part in events that is called, I mean this part in control, that is called clones. Clones basically just clones it and you can give it a certain task to do and then we can delete the, cl the, cl <laughs> the clone. So let's, to do this, we want to actually make it so it gets increasingly harder for Flappy Bird to get through the pipe. So they'll start off slow, but then they'll eventually get faster and faster, which will make it so there's like different levels basically. So. Let's go to our variable section and click make a variable. We're going to want to call this level just because it's different levels. And I'm going to click for this sprite only. We can see that both gravity and levels showing. We can always just change that later. So if we want levels to start out, it's basically we're going to want to make the X movement of the screen uh, be the levels. I, this, I know that's my sound a bit confusing right now, but here, I'll just show you right now. So let's go to events, drag in when green flag clicked and the hide button. So we just want it when it's over here. We just want it to hide first. We only want its clones to show. So since we don't want it to be at a very standstill at the very beginning, I say we have to set level to two. This is basically the X movement I'll show you just right now. And let's make it go to X, just 300, because that's very far off on the screen. And then set it to the very middle of the page, which is Y0. There we go. We can see that it disappears, also because of the hide function. And we want to create a forever loop saying we want to create our clones now. So we want to create clone of myself. So it's just going to create many different clones. But if we don't have a wait function, it's going to be just clones one after another coming at you. So we want to add in a wait two seconds. This is just the basic script. We can't even show anything yet because we don't have the rest of it in. So let's actually just start programming the code for our clones. Let's go to our look section and drag in the show because as you know before, we hit it. And we want to make it a random costume, basically our costumes here. So we want it to be either this one, this one, or this one, and the computer will choose randomly for us. The way we do that is drag in the switch costume. So we can see that it's only three that we can choose from, but if we go to operators, there's this pick random area that we can actually drag into switch costume. So we want to switch costume, pick random one, two, three because we have three different costumes so if we switch our costume one to three it'll pick one of the random ones next what we want to do is make it so once it gets to this area we want it to disappear the way to do that the easiest way to do that is to go into the paint section and make a totally new character make it completely white we can just do that by dragging everything down and let's drag in, wait, oopsies, that is a gray. Make sure we don't have an outline color and drag the brightness all the way up. So we've just a white rectangle. 
Let's make it very, very small. I'm going to drag it so it covers the entire screen. Just put in the very, very left hand corner for our area. We can see that if we click on it, we actually know it's there. I'm just going to drag it to the left here. And it's X and Y coordinate is listed right there. So when green flag clicked, we can see it automatically updated. We'll go back into this code later. Thank you everybody for watching part one of making yourself a Flappy Bird game. If you learned something new or enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you subscribe, you'll be notified when I make part two, so I'd highly recommend you do that. And I'll catch you guys in part two of making yourself a Flappy Bird game. Goodbye.